Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is Friday, June 23rd, 2023. We've had a couple fronts come through. We had a half inch of rain last night and we just had a half inch of rain today at about two o'clock. So yeah, that's nice. So it's cooled off a little bit. It's uh, in the mid eighties, but there's absolutely no breeze whatsoever. So it's humid, muggy. And so I got my ice collar on and I got these little fan things. I got these last year, the year before, and they look dorky, but they really do work. They, they keep air on your face and uh, it helps keep you cool. Haven't broke out the ice vest just yet, but uh, probably when we do the honey harvest, I will definitely be wearing it then because it will be hot. So the supers are, they're pretty much filled up and they, they're done <clears throat> probably most of the nectar collecting they're gonna do. The flow has slowed down. I noticed today they've cut the alfalfa that's two miles to my north. So that may be part of why they slowed down. They're not flying at all right now, uh, mainly because of the rain that came through and it was overcast. But uh, I've seen a lot of bees down on uh, what's left of my pond uh, for, because it's so dry and it doesn't hold water. <laughs> but yeah, they're down there collecting water. So yeah, we're transitioning into the second part of the beekeeping year where, so we've, we, we passed the summer solstice this week. So the days are gonna start getting shorter. There's less food for them to collect. So bees will start getting grumpy. So if you're used to uh, working on your bees without smoke and uh, they don't, they're real friendly bees, well, they, they're gonna change on you here and they're gonna get defensive and they're gonna wanna protect what they've got in there. And uh, all those bees that are out foraging during the day, they're gonna be back at the hive with nothing to do except to attack you. So yeah, things get different. So just be ready for that if you're a new beekeeper. So today what I'm gonna do is, uh, it's it, the sun's setting, uh, it's, it's getting late, so I gotta move quick. But uh, my second Apame hive down there. So a couple uh, videos back, you saw <clears throat> I was working on a hive for Michael. And uh, I thought since, I combined that first Apame, uh, I might get in that second one because it's in a little better shape. It was all one instead of two, three frames and it was doing good. So I thought I'll check it after I filmed that video and I started going through it and uh, found swarm cells. <laughs> so, and I didn't find the queen. So that tells me they've already swarmed. So. Yeah, those small nukes and uh, all that flow we had, man, they are quick to swarm. So that's what happened, that, that got away from me. So what I've done is, uh, there's one frame in there with the swarm cells, there were four cells on it. Uh, one not capped, three capped. I cut one off and I put it in a queen clip and set it in there upright. So it's sitting there in the bottom of the hive in a queen clip. So I can collect that queen. Uh, there's a local beekeeper here uh, he's trying, he, he had a queenless hive. I, uh, he came by and, and I sold him a, a brood frame. They pulled down a queen, but he still thinks it's queenless. So I'm, I saving that cell there and maybe I can get him that queen. But in the meantime, last week, or actually this week, Monday, uh, it was, uh, about three o'clock in the afternoon. I was about to wrap it up and go in and, and relax so I could, you know, have a little downtime before I went to work the next day. Uh, cause I was off Monday. And uh, <clears throat> my grandson called me, he works out on a ranch south of here. And uh, he said, hey Pop, there's a big swarm out here on a fence post. So uh, I'll put some pictures of that here and me collecting that swarm.
So yeah, it doesn't look that big on the fence post because it's all spread out, but I put it into two baskets and I brought it back. And you remember a video or two back, Hive 26 Newt, uh, I sold that. The guy came, picked it up. He lives about a mile and a half from here. And uh, so that was vacant. So I put that swarm right there, uh, the hive that's uh, got the blue bottom, the one on the right with the blue bottom. Uh, it was big enough, I put it into two deeps, and uh, I only had one drawn out frame of comb and it was brood, it was a uh, drone comb. So I stuck that in there with the, the new frames and I put a feeder in the top. I filled that feeder up, put a queen excluder on the bottom. I did all this, it was like almost dark, and uh, got it all set up, put the, uh, the two baskets out front after I shook the bees in and put the, put the lid on, and uh, I had a inner cover with no notch, so they were locked in. The queen was locked in, the queen couldn't get out. So I was checking it this week, and I've been out here every day this week, and uh, I can't find a queen in there. So a lot of bees got into that feeder and drowned. There's a, probably an inch of dead bees in there. So I think what happened after I dumped them in, there was chaos and, and they got in that feeder and they pushed each other down in there. So lesson learned there, don't put a frame feeder in a, in a swarm like that. Let them get settled first. So I was concerned because I didn't have a brood frame ready. It was getting dark. I thought, well, I'll give them some food. Maybe that'll help hold them there, right? So yeah. Well, they're still there, but I think it's queenless. So I might get one of these uh, queen cells uh, from this apame over here and transplant it in over in this swarm. So let's get in this apame, see what we find. If I find that uh, one cell's open, I might just bring that queen on over to this uh, Hive 26 swarm and see how if they accept her or not. And if so, I'll, I'll just leave her there and uh, We'll just go from there. Let's get started. Okay, here's our double nuke apame hive number 34, and I have it set up as a single. There's seven frames in here. This is the hive that has swarmed. So I need to correct something I said a minute ago. Uh, I couldn't find the queen in here. So last, yesterday, I remember, I did find that queen. So she's a small tiger queen with a tiger striped butt, and uh, I did find her, so I pulled her out and I made a split with her, moved her down there in uh, hive number 37, and basically she's just banked there. So I don't have seven frames in here, just remember that. I have five, and I have my queen cell in a clip right here, so let's see if she's emerged. And my frame with the other queen cells is right here. So yeah, it looks good down in there. Let me see if I can grab it. And it does not look like it's emerged yet. Okay, so here's what we got going on. Let's see if I can get it open. Ah, looky there. It's been chewed out on the side. That tells me one of those other queens <laughs> emerged out of there and uh no wait it didn't it stuck and i just destroyed it well let's see what it looked like well she looked okay she's got a ways to go well at least that tells me how far along these hives are well dang so that was just laying in there i guess the bees propolized it in there so it was tight and when I opened it, it pulled the side off. No, I'll be darned. I've never done anything like this before. I thought I would try that, so. Well, shoot, that tells me uh, these uh, cells that are left in here have a few more days to go. I think it's a nine, nine days capped on a queen cell before they emerge. So they've been capped uh, probably that I've seen uh, four or five days. So yeah, but she laid this thing up. Uh, oh, here's my here's my frame right here. I thought it was the next one over, but yeah. So here's all the uh, cells you can see on that thing. So there's uh, three remaining, and. 
they look like they could emerge any time. But if they're the same age as that one that we just saw, they got a ways to go. So, gosh, that's a bummer. So I think what I might do is, uh, since there's three left here, I'm going to cut one of these off that looks like I could harvest it uh, without getting into the larva and take it over to this big swarm over here, Hive 26, and transplant it onto one of the drawn combs I have in there. So let's start on that. So I'm going to lay this on this board so there's no pressure on any of these. I'm going to try this one right here on the end. That'd probably be the easiest to get to. So what you want to do is you want to cut down into the wood a little bit because you don't want to expose that larva. And sometimes it'll be right there at the edge. And if you cut into this and you come back and you see some white larva or royal jelly, you, you blew it. You didn't go deep enough into the wood. Hopefully I'll get it off of there successfully. Yeah, see? I got all wood there. And no... No larva showing. So we'll transplant this over into our big swarm over there and I'll never put any pressure on it to like squeeze or reduce the size of this uh, queen cell. So, let's get this back in the hive. I don't know if you noticed but I got my bee suit cleaned. Threw it in the washer, soaked it and all that. It was getting a little funky. So Guardian provided me with this bee suit very graciously and I want it to look good because it's a good bee suit bee jacket there's a link uh, in the my descriptions uh, down there a link to the Guardian bee supply and all their apparel they got full suits half suits like this one and they're ventilated air passes right through them they're they keep you cool they're really good and the thing I like about this is the veil unzips. So when I'm doing these fans, I can unzip this, take it down, adjust them, whatever. I can get a drink, wipe my face, whatever I need to do. Really like it. Thank you, Guardian. I've had it for a year. So that's the first time I've washed it. <laughs> I try to wait and wash my jackets uh, after I harvest honey because that's when they really get nasty. All right, let's get over uh, to Hive 26 and do our cell transplant. So the split I pulled is right here. Let's just take a peek in here real quick. Be sure it's, it's okay. So yeah, this queen is small and she's got a tiger butt so man she's hard to spot i just want to make sure we got a good population in here and we're okay yeah that looks good i don't need to do anything else this is just a queen bank uh with the nectar flow slowing down this isn't going to grow they've got food uh, in there they've got a honey on a frame so they're good thing got to watch on these is like a high beetle infestations uh and wax moth larva but and ants there's a few little ants down here but a small hive like this it, it has a hard time defending itself but there's a decent population in there for, for that size of a box all right let's get over to this big old swarm and i suspect my queen drowned up there and that's what has happened to her and I think they probably have all of their syrup out of there. They were taking it down fast. So I put a queen excluder for two days on the bottom of this box 
so any queens could not go down and leave and the top had a inner cover with no notch so no bees could come or go out of a top entrance I'm gonna see how far I can get without smoke on this yeah see a lot of bees in here so I was hoping I'd find you know a couple of queens in here you know some virgin queens Wow They've cleaned out this nectar and there's no dead bees in there. So they've cleaned all that up. They had to haul them out the front door. That's amazing. There was at least an inch of dead bees in here floating. And they have totally cleaned that up. And another thing I didn't have, so you know, when you're doing things and it's getting dark on you, I didn't have any little floaties in there to help them out. But I think what happened is they all piled in on each other and uh, that was the reason that it was drowning because they were there's just chaos in here. Okay, gonna need smoke. That's obvious. So I will refill that feeder tomorrow. I gotta mix up my nectar and everything. So all these are new frames. I've got uh, two drawn ones here. Later, uh, like the third day, when I pulled out the queen excluder, I put a brood frame in here for them. So another reason I think they're queenless, I'll show you here in a second. But the, another reason I want to feed them is to give them enough nectar to draw all this out, which they're working on that. That's a, a Man Lake right cell, wax coated. And these are Saracel wax coated plastic frames. Thought I'd give some of these a try. And they're drawing these out nicely. These came very well waxed. I was very impressed. So if you want to try some plastic frames, these Saracel plastic uh, waxed, they came waxed like really good. So this is all nectar. Be cool if I'd see some eggs. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so no bee flight today. All the bees are right here. And like I was saying, they're all here just waiting to, to jump on you. The ones that are normally out foraging. So let's see what we've got here. This is my brood frame that I made or I put in here. So here's the reason I think there's no queen in here. So when I put a brood frame in here, I wanted one that was mostly capped, right? I don't want to put a bunch of larvae in here. Uh, so I just want that capped brood in here and that pheromone. So there wasn't any eggs, or at least if there were, there weren't many. So if you notice on this other side, they pulled a queen cell down right there, an emergency queen cell, and they're capping that off. And there is a larvae in there. Oh, there's another one right here. So, so where the, the youngest larvae were is where they pulled those cells. There you can see it. And there is a larvae in that. So I could probably leave this alone and they could make a queen. Oh, there's a, well, there was one right there. That may have been from the prior hive. So what I'm going to do is uh, transplant my little cell onto this. So again, I'm going to lay this down on this block of wood. Uh, all my cells are on this side that's up, so I'm in no danger of uh, breaking any of those. So I've got some area with no larva and no nectar right here. So here's my queen cell. And when you do this, you'll be careful not to push it. Don't compress it at all. You don't want to mess with the space that that little queen larva has inside there, or pupa, whatever you want to call her. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this spot right here and I'm going to spread it out. Kind of shape it the size of that cell. <clears throat> and I'm going to make some space below it so that queen will have 
space to emerge out into. It won't be blocked. So the areas you want to push, don't push up here. If you're going to push, push up in here where my blade is, where I'm not putting any pressure on that larvae that's inside there. And this wax and propolis kind of sticky stuff will hold it in place. Just like it was put there naturally. And these bees will come and they'll work on it and they will repair it somewhat. They'll work on this area here. Just like they did that one in the uh, clip. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to kind of push some of this back down onto it. Kind of overlap it. So, it's in there good. Alright, there's a good shot of them. So these queen cells here, they look way better than yesterday. Yesterday I was thinking, man, that that's the broken one. And there's one up here. Now the bees have got it covered. Anyway, let's get that in back into the, the swarm hive. They probably don't need that now, knowing that this looks as good as it does, but that increases their odds. Okay, here's our uh, frame with the cells. So that one should open four or five days before, well, seven, seven or eight days before those others do. Yeah, these bees are a lot more grumpy than, than they have been at, at any time. And my smoker's gone out. <laughs> That's all right. We'll just go nice and slow. It, it's amazing to me how they clean this, this feeder out. Because yesterday when I come out, or two days ago when I filled it up, there was a bunch of dead bees in the bottom of it. And I didn't realize it when I started pouring the fluid in there, the liquid. Uh, that's when I noticed them all. So they've been cleaning house. Well, there you go. So that's how you, you could do a queen transplant of a cell into a queenless hive. Uh, if you don't have a queen handy and you happen to have some cells and your donor hive doesn't need six or seven swarm cells in it, what that's gonna do is create cast swarms where those extra queens are going to leave and take some of the bees with them. So you want to leave two, three good cells in a, in a hive for them. And you can use the others however you want. You can make splits, you can cut them like that. Uh, they also make little round cages that you can press into the comb and uh, you can put over that queen cell. So when that queen emerges, she would be trapped in there. So there's that option too. Uh, those don't work so well when you have a plastic foundation because you can't press it in very good. But on the wax foundations or natural foundation, they'll hold pretty good. So you can check those out too. Hey, so that's it for this video. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. And I'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.